Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and in our today's episode of our long-running video series about AM magnetic antennas we'll talk about uh, so-called dielectric losses and uh, magnetic losses in the substrate where you put your coil on and there is uh, still another uh, kind of loss and that's called the radiation resistance and so these are the three final ways where uh, losses that influence your Q factor uh, can occur. We have learned in the last episode uh, that about all the kind of copper losses, the, of course the copper resistance that you can counteract by using um, a large diameter copper wire. Then we had the skin effect which you can counteract with a Litz wire, but only uh, up to around 1 or 1.5 megahertz. And then we had uh, the proximity effect, which you can counteract by winding your coil with a large distance between each turn of the winding, like in this uh, special uh, shortwave uh, ferrite rod or loop stick antenna. Uh, or in a frame antenna, which we excessively have discussed and where we have a separate video. And so um, all the effort you put into winding your optimum Q factor uh, coil by using either, either Litz wire or a thick uh, copper wire with a large distance, all your efforts uh, can go to the waste bin if you neglect the influence of any uh, ferromagnetic material or even the corpse, uh, the template where you are winding your coil onto. So let's start with the magnetic losses. Um, you might know this from transformers. Well, this is obviously not a mains transformer, but a very small transformer used for switch mode power supply. Uh, but you know that in any transformer used for uh, power uh, transmission, either a mains or a, a switch mode power supply transformer, there is some uh, ferromagnetic material inside. Either it's ferrite or a special uh, transformer, iron, sheets. And um, now imagine it like this way. In a mains transformer, the, uh, the electric and magnetic field, they change every 50 or 60 times a second, depending on whether you live in the 50 or 60 hertz world. And um, it takes some energy just to reorder the magnetic domains because they have to change direction 50 or 60 times a second and so this takes some energy out of the magnetic field and that is of course a loss and the same is of course true with uh, loop stick antennas and uh, I've made a separate video well not all ferrite materials used for loop stick antennas are equally um, useful for all frequencies the standard material used for the uh, long wave and medium wave range, which you can also use for VLF, very low frequency, or ELF, extremely low frequency um, use, uh, they, uh, they only work also around up to 1 or 1.5 megahertz. And you could not use um, iron sheets used for mains transformers. Um, the higher the frequency, the let's call it the better the ferrite material has to become. Um, I've made a special video about this uh, special uh, ferrite material for shortwave reception, which also only works uh, reasonably well up to 5 megahertz and the limit of usability, usability is around 10 megahertz. So depending on the ferrite material, there's always a frequency limit where the losses just become too large. 
And losses means uh, they take up energy out of uh, the uh, magnetic field and that could ruin your Q factor. So no matter how, um, how sophisticated your, your winding and your coil onto the uh, ferrite rod is, uh, like here, this uh, um, very high quality winding for shortwave ap applications with a very thick copper wire and a very large distance between the turns just to minimize uh, skin effect and proximity effect. The, all this only works up to a certain frequency and um, well, that you just have to know this. Um, now you might think if I'm using a, a uh, like the spiderweb coil or a frame antenna, well, I don't have to care about losses in, in uh, ferromagnetic materials, but remember, uh, iron is all around us and don't forget, like for example, the frame of your table. Uh, you, when you are using, uh, no matter if, if uh, loop stick antennas on ferrite rods or, um, or these kind of coils on uh, plastic material, um, any kind of metal should be at least one meter away from your reception coil. Uh, because any metal will give you losses because they just simply take out energy out of the magnetic field. They kind of steal it and they could ruin your Q factor. They even change the inductivity because uh, you know that using ferrite rods is just because you need less windings because the ferrite material kind of sucks in the magnetic field lines and kind of amplifies um, the uh, magnetic field, for example, 50 or 100 times, so you need less windings and you get uh, the effect uh, as if the coil would be, would have a much larger diameter, like for example this one. So this is the positive side for um, using ferrite material or ferromagnetic material. But the downside is, are the losses. And remember just um, any, any uh, metal should be at least one meter away from, uh, from your reception coil, no matter if it's a loop stick antenna or a frame antenna or any other kind of uh, magnetic antenna. And remember, uh, you cannot use uh, any uh, ferrite material for loop stick antennas for all frequencies. You have to uh, select the right material for the frequency that you want to receive. So, uh, that's easy to remember. Um, so, that shall be it for a short introduction. I will give you the links to some more detailed discussion about this uh, shortwave ferrite rod material and another video where I uh, explained um, demagnetizing, demagnetizing and degaussing, um, where I explain what happens with the magnetic field inside um, ferromagnetic material. If you are interested in, in more details about the losses and where they come from, etc. But for, for the practical application, you just have to remember, get rid of any metals in the range of one meter around your reception coil. So now let's come uh, to the so-called dielectric losses. First of all, an explanation. What, what are dielectric materials? Well, all isolating materials are dielectric, dielectric uh, by definition. And you might think, well, what, what do I have to care about uh, dielectric materials? I'm just winding my uh, coil onto, onto this uh, template made out of uh, plastic, so everything should be all right. How can this influence um, my Q factor? How can there be any losses uh, because they are isolators and there is no current flowing? Uh, so what influence could this have? 
Well, you might know this effect from plastic film uh, capacitors. I will show you a, a comparison of the uh, material that um, that plastic film capacitors are made out of. And um, here we have, sorry that it's in German, but this is the, here are the losses, the dielectric losses in percent uh, for three different frequencies. And when doing radio reception with uh, magnetic antennas, we are usually dealing with frequencies well above 100 kilohertz. And here you can see the standard uh, material used for cheap plastic film capacitors already has 3% losses at 100 kilohertz. So it's totally unusable uh, for as a, a template uh, to wind on your coil. Uh, better is polypropylene, uh, which is around 10 times better, but at, even at 100 kilohertz, it gives um, a quarter of a percent losses, which means, uh, which translates to that your Q factor already starts to uh, dr drastically worsen at frequencies well above 100 kilohertz. And um, um, in, when you use ceramic materials, these uh, better are, you might know this, that when it comes to high frequencies, 10 megahertz and above, you don't, can't use any plastic film capacitors anymore. You're, you're changing to ceramic capacitors. And they are again up to a factor of 10 better than polypropylene. Um, so uh, there really is an influence on the use of the material that you wind your coil on at frequencies even at 100 kilohertz. And now imagine uh, what would happen at 1 megahertz at the middle of the, of the uh, AM medium wave range. There the losses would even be uh, again in, in the percent range. And that is simply too much. If you put so much effort in, in winding a more or less perfect and beautifully looking spiderweb coil or uh, even a frame antenna, uh, then uh, you have to watch out for, um, do you ruin all the effort in optimizing your Q factor just by changing the wrong uh, material as as the uh, template where you are winding your coil on. And I will show you a, another comparison what materials uh, are useful more or less and how the losses are at uh, dielectric materials in high frequency applications. So here we have the dielectric losses of a lot of different materials over a much wider frequency range from uh, 100 kilohertz up to 50 megahertz. And uh, sorry, again, that's in German. I'll try to translate the different materials. Um, it's a little bit difficult to hear the y-axis. Uh, the, the tangent delta in units of uh, 10 to the minus 4, which means uh, this would be here, the upper range would be uh, 10 to the minus 1, which is 0 0.1, which would be, this would be 10% loss, 1% loss, I'll write it down, 10% loss, 1% loss, Point uh, oh, uh, point one percent loss and point oh one percent loss. So you we get a better. Uh, we can read the y-axis better. Now let's start. What is pertinex? Uh, that is, you know this uh, better as a phenolic paper, and you can see the losses if you wind your coil on phenolic paper are um, so large that it's nearly useless uh, to try to get a, a uh, high quality coil wind on that. What is still worse is paper or especially cardboard because cardboard uh, has uh, water inside 
and uh, this water has extremely bad properties uh, so cardboard is the worst you can use uh, phenolic paper is the second worst then comes Bakelite, um, a little bit better, but still for our purposes the losses are in the percent range, e even here at the medium wave uh, range. Next the blue curve, uh, the, the light blue uh, curve is porcelain or china. Um, there are of course a lot of variations of porcelain, because porcelain is simply a ceramic material and uh, the range of ceramic materials is very large but anyway it's much better it's already below one percent even at the higher shortwave frequency then strangely comes uh, rubber uh, rubber even uh, I, I couldn't believe this but apparently um, uh, special kinds of rubber are really uh, useful with losses in the point five to point seven percent regions but here come the really interesting uh, materials um, the uh, the viol light violet curve here that is a uh, special kind of quartz material quartz mixed with other uh, uh, ceramic materials and here uh, come materials that you don't know in, in the US or in the English speaking uh, regions. Um, <clears throat> these are also special ceramic types useful for high frequency applications. And then a glimmer that is mica and mica you know from capacitors are one of the best high frequency capacitors and finally we have pure quartz and that is the best uh, material you can get with losses even in the dozens of megahertz below 0.01 percent so there is a large range uh, of the losses from totally unusable to nearly neglectable um, and the absolute best you can get would be simply air or vacuum. Air and vacuum are nearly the same in, in the uh, frequency range. The, the difference only becomes uh, susceptible at the gigahertz range. But here at, at our interesting frequencies from 100 kilohertz to 50 megahertz uh, air or vacuum would be the best and if you think well you cannot wind a uh, a coil on simply on air well I'll show you uh, some pictures in the background that this is very well possible winding uh, apparently winding a coil on air of course there's a little trick with it but uh, well what's the next best thing the next best thing is the material we are uh, using for the spider web coils and this is a special type of polystyrene it would be in the range around here so the losses are definitely below one percent and you can, could even improve this just to get a little bit nearer to air, I'll put away the, the, uh, the graphics here. And that is this, you can hardly see this, but this is a special skeletal um, uh, type of carrier for the, um, for the spider web coil. And the difference is, is clear. Here you have the full material only with the little slots for changing the um, from upper to lower side but if you just uh, route out uh, the uh, the material between the slots you you end up with this kind of skeletal uh, template for winding um, your spider web coil so uh, the losses only appear here in these very small regions and um, there is a very large reduction in the losses just by using 
you win about a factor of 10 uh, improving your Q factor or uh, minimizing your losses would be uh, better because the Q factor still is limited by the proximity effect and by the skin effect. But to uh, get rid of any losses that you can control, um, the, the next best thing to winding in air uh, or uh, making your coil on air without any carrier would be this skeletal type template for winding um, your spiderweb coil. You might have seen this perhaps already in our shop. They are, uh, sorry, they, they are quite expensive, but it's worth uh, the effort uh, just to use this. I will discuss the specialties of these uh, spiderweb coils, which I use heavily for a demonstration, just because they are beautiful and have um, quite good Q-factor properties. Uh, I'll make a separate video on what are the special properties and how do you wind them uh, as near to perfect as possible. These, I already mentioned this, these were my first attempts to wind them and uh, it, it, although I, what, what it's in Germany called two left hands, if I can wind them uh, this way, 90% uh, perfect, then you can do it too. Um, but um, as a conclusion, if ever possible, go to the effort, spend some more money and use uh, these uh, skeletal type templates uh, for winding your spiderweb coil. So um, this was mainly the topic for today about minimizing uh, dielectric and ferroelectric or magnetic uh, losses. We still have the point about the radiation loss, but I, I will leave out this uh, simply because it's not important for uh, reception, magnetic reception coils in the frequency range that is of interest for us from long wave to uh, short wave. Uh, this becomes important when you are when you are constructing a transmitting antenna, but for receive, reception antennas like these ones, uh, the uh, radiation resistance plays no role. So we don't have to deal with the th with all the theory behind th that. So that was it for today. Let's sum it up again. Um, use the right material either winding your coil totally in air with the trick I uh, will give you the links down below where you can see how this is done. Then the second best thing would be a skeletal um, template to wind your coil on uh, out of this special polystyrene uh, material. Never use cardboard, never use phenolic paper, wood or something like that. Use high quality plastics with the lowest dielectric losses. And when, uh, when it comes to magnetic losses, take care of that you have absolutely no metal near your reception coil except the desired uh, ferrite material where you wind your loop stick antenna on, but no other metals near your reception coils. At best, at least one meter away or around your reception coil, there should be no, not a single piece of metal. No screw, no nut, nothing. So that was it for today for a short introduction to dielectric and magnetic losses. Thanks for watching and next time we'll just come to uh, how to calculate your coil, how many windings you have to make, which lids wire or which, uh, which solid copper wire you should use. Just playing around a little bit with our uh, spreadsheet that I've created. Uh, and well, that was it for today. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.